makers, like you pump it and it makes whipped cream. Apparently, if you go too long, it also makes butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so does anybody in here have a peanut or nut allergy? No? Okay, I have more candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sugar on luck because you know lunch made tired, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> All the choices. And really, if you sat at the table by yourself, you get all the candy on that table. Way to go, right? Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> right? <laughs> So if you want to come, we've got a bit.ly to a Google form for you to fill out that we'll be looking at the survey results during our presentation. How many of you are done filling out the Google form and have moved on to answering your work emails? <laughs> There's no judgment. <laughs> None at all. I will warn you, apparently Ben doesn't agree with me. I slept with my window open and now I'm all like congested or something. So it must be. I don't know. Yeah, because we're from the west side of the mountains where it's really wet. I'm just not used to all the dry air. This is so, really, this is wet sound. This is not dry. This is not like it's not? Dry. Compared to the rainforest I live in, it's <laughs> kind of. It's all about perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So if I start hacking uncontrollably, I apologize. Danielle's going to take over for me. I have <laughs> so, express instructions to make yes. sure the ship keeps moving. Yeah. <laughs> Even when the so, captain falls off. We have a plan. Okay. So if you just walked in, We've got a bit.ly to a Google form whose survey results we'll take a look at during our presentation. So you want to go to that and get started. I'm glad to see everybody has a device. Uh, Google forms will work on your phone through your web browser. It's a little bit more of a pain to run, but it will work. There is not currently, because I checked like half an hour ago, a Google forms app. Unlike a lot of the other Google apps, there's not an app for it, but it will work through your browser. Okay. Think we should get started? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. Do it. We are your trainers. My name is Danielle. I'm part of our e-learning team at Lower Columbia College over in Longview, Washington. Mm -hmm. I'm Sarah Griffith. I'm the director of e-learning at LCC. And our theme is the 80s, so we figured we'd share with you like your little piece of information about us to get to know us. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite item from the 80s was my mom's ALF phone. It was a great big ALF that was holding a like mm -hmm. corded receiver. Yeah. And then my favorite yeah. 80s TV show was The Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. So my favorite 80s item was a hair crimper. I actually owned one that was bought at the 99 cent store. Lasted about a month, <laughs> which is typical. Uh, but it was, I had some awesome hair back in the 80s because of that crimper. So, I had hair back in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> also, my favorite 80s TV show is MacGyver. So if you were to take our two favorite 80s items and put them together... This is what you get. <laughs> that is the exact phone, by the yeah. way. So to get to know a couple of you, you don't all have to answer. Do any of you have a favorite item or TV show or thing from the 80s? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm a huge fan of gold. Don't alive yet. Mm -hmm. I like how young people always throw that in there. I wasn't alive yet, but. <laughs> really? I love that. That's awesome. Perfect. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, uh, by the end of this training, we're hoping that you'll know how to create and share a Google Form, understand Google Form settings and be able to process the results of a Google form, see the results and see you know, the pretty pie charts that it makes for you. So this training is not about Google Sheets or Google Drive. 
we had some folks, we've given this training before at our college, and we had some folks come in expecting to learn how to use Google Docs, and that's not what this is. Google Forms, completely different. So we just want to throw that disclaimer out there. Okay, so if you have a Google account, you'll want to log into it now. Um, if you're a Microsoft school and you don't have a Google account, you'd have to create one, but yep. Google Gmail. But you can still stare at this lovely picture of Bill Gates. <laughs> Who is not affiliated with Google. No. <laughs> And how many of you are a Google school? Anybody in here? Okay, Google. awesome. Okay. Right. So the process for using Google Forms is really just three steps. You create your questions, kind of like if you create quizzes in your LMS. You'll send your form out to your participants. There's a couple of different ways to do that. We'll show you those. And then you'll process your results. And all of that happens within Google Forms at forms.google.com. Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> First, we're going to go over questions and settings. Mm -hmm. So to add a question, there's a plus button. Should we check and see if they're at Google Forms yet? Yeah, probably. Yes, go to Google <laughs> Forms if you want to follow along on your device. We're going to switch back and forth. So for those of you who aren't following along, we'll show you on screen too. But if you do want to follow along, you'll go to Google Forms. Oh, let me escape our presentation here. And you can do this through Drive or Forms, so it would be drive.google.com or forms.google.com. So if you're a Google Drive user, that new button up in the top left will let you choose Google Forms. Mm -hmm. You just click More down at the bottom. And, and let us know you if there. you need to see that again. Yes. Yeah, all right. So from Google Drive, you'll click this New button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then down at the bottom of this list is more. has a lot of really neat tools down there, but mm -hmm. you want to choose Google Forms. This little arrow will let you choose a blank form or from a template. We're going to start blank. Okay. So your Google Form starts like this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, we can totally go back to the Google Form. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so your form would need a title. So go ahead and give that form whatever title you want to. We're going to call it, what should I call I don't know. Um, we've got an 80s theme going on. I feel like there we go. So this one's going to be about common themes from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And it's been a while since I've seen that movie, so you guys might have to help me with some common themes. <laughs> Uh, to add a question, there's a plus button up here at the top right that'll allow you to add a question to the form. You can title the question whatever you want. Um, okay, so I'm going to make this a multiple choice question. We're just going over the, uh, the menu. Yeah, never mind. I'm not going to skip ahead on my presentation. <laughs> That's what I'm not going to do. So the plus adds a question. This little guy will import questions, so that's a new feature. You can actually import questions from other Google Forms by clicking on that. It'll ask you where you want to find your questions for, and then you can import them in. Let's see, what's a safe one? That one looks safe. <laughs> there we go. So now it'll allow me to select whatever questions I want to import to this form. So if you start creating forms, you use common questions. This might be helpful to import questions. It's really nice not to have to retype every mm -hmm. option. Every all your other yep, all your other forms in your account. Yep. Yeah. The power. You have the power now. Like He-Man from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We are actually a Google and Microsoft school, so we have access to both items. Uh, but we find that we use Google Forms and Google, just period, a lot more than Microsoft. Yeah, absolutely. So over here on this menu bar, the little piece of paper with the arrow shooting out, it's import questions, so you click on that, and then it'll automatically open up all of the Google Forms you have created. Then you can just select, where'd my Northwest Elon one? Here we go. Select which form you want to use, click on the select button, and it'll bring up all of the questions over on the right-hand side, so you can select whichever question you want to use. Should be able to. Let's import those two questions. There we go. And then if you decide you don't want it, you can just delete the question with the delete button. 
Yeah, and you can mm -hmm. pull from multiple forms. You don't have to choose just one form to import from. Mm -hmm. You have to do them separately. You can't say, oh, I want to seek all the questions from this, this, and this form. You have yeah. to look at them one at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the next item on the menu is the title. So you can actually add some word text there in between the questions if you have some more directions for the form. You've got an image here. You can add an image. This is great for doing a runoff vote for like which t-shirt you want to choose for your office. Uh, so you can just put pictures in there, have people vote on those pictures. Uh, to do that, you would just choose an image to upload just from your computer, or you can do a search option as well, just from stock images. Do you keep images in your Google Drive too? You can pull mm -hmm. those. Perfect. Right. Right. Yep, exactly. Uh, then you've got add a video. So you can go out to YouTube, do a video search, or if you have the direct URL, you can post it in here. Let's see. It's not very, oh. Love for sale. I'm not sure that's going to be an appropriate one. <laughs> we don't have to play it. We no, we just have to use it. Let's just go season one, episode 18. Oh, yes. Season <laughs> one, episode 18. Apparently Dorothy is in the hospital. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so you can embed a video, have a title to the video. Uh, then the last one right here is you can add a section. So sections are great ways to break up the form. Uh, if you want a specific set of questions and then you've got a second set of questions, you can break those up by section. Mm -hmm. Sections serve two purposes. One is breaking your questions up. So if it's in a separate section, your user will have to click the next button to go to the next page of the form, and they'll see a new page that'll give them that set of questions. It'll also <laughs> let you make it so that when the user gives one answer or another, they go to a different <laughs> set of questions. So if I wanted, <laughs> if I wanted at the end of this question, let's see, we're gonna go add other options. We're going to just go option two. I could choose this little three dots icon down in the bottom of any question. And that gives me the option to go to a section based on the answer. So if I wanted my users to just continue on to whatever the next section is, which means just straight down the line, you'd leave it as continue to next section. Or I can choose to have send them to a specific section. Right now, since we only have two, telling them to go to section two is not going to do anything different. But this works really well for like, if you ever filled out a form for like, what you want to eat at a conference mm -hmm. or for a meal. It's like if you choose that you want a vegetarian option, I don't want to take you to the page that has all the meat options. Mm -hmm. If you choose that you want a hamburger and I want to ask you how well done you want it, it's not going to make sense if I ask you what you want and you say chicken and then it asks you, do you want your chicken medium rare? Like mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> it's not going to be helpful. So that's a really easy way to sort out what your what your questions look like to your users. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just by using the section. Yes, yep. and if you title your section, it makes it a whole lot easier to tell what you're sending them to, so we usually recommend that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna talk about question types. So there's quite a few question types. If you choose the wrong question type, you might get some really weird answers back from folks. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what this list looks like. So your short answer and paragraph questions you are the first group that I actually get to tell what the difference between a short answer and a paragraph question is because we've been scratching our head for ages to figure out what the difference is. Because as far as we can tell, there's not really a character limit. They, they don't cut off the short answer questions earlier than the paragraph questions. If they're, it, We've looked and Googled and some folks say, yes, there is. Some folks say, no, there's not. Mm -hmm. What really is different is how a screen reader will read those questions. So the answer field for a short answer question and a paragraph question is read differently by a screen reader. Mm -hmm. I checked it using NVDA. I don't know what all it looks like on other screen readers. The short answer question reads short answer, line edit. The paragraph answer, paragraph, multi-line edit. So it's a very, very minor difference, but those two do show up differently. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to leave here to go over some of those. So let's actually look at some of those options. So your short answer and your paragraph options, they'll look pretty well the same to you. It shows up as short answer text or long answer text. When somebody actually sees your form, they don't see short answer text or long answer text. At any point, you can choose that preview button. And I can see that it just shows your answer. It shows that whether it's a paragraph or a long answer <clears throat> text question. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference on your end. So that, that's your main difference is how a screen reader will read it. 
Multiple choice is where you want somebody to choose one option. It's pretty self-explanatory. Your check boxes are the sister to the multiple choice question. That's where you want somebody to choose, have the option to choose more than one answer. So if you are looking for, okay, what meeting days are gonna be best for you? I want you to be able to choose more than one. Do you want Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday? You can choose more than one. If you only want folks to pick one, multiple choice. And then your drop down questions. That is, it's essentially a multiple choice question, but one where you choose what your respondents have the option to choose. So sometimes if you have just those fill in the blanks questions, you're gonna get a billion different answers. And if you're trying to process data for them, it's really hard to process data when you've got like, oh, this person capitalized this or this person spelled it that way. And drop down options make that a whole lot easier for you. So if I wanted to go option one here, option two, when I look at that form, somebody's gonna have, they're gonna have the choose option and they can choose option one or option two. They can't write in their own. And then the last question type I'm gonna run over before I hand it off to Sarah is your file upload type. So file upload does not mean that you're going to upload a file, it means you're asking whoever's responding to your form to upload a file. The main drawback to using the file upload, the person has to log in using a Gmail account. They have to sign in to be able to upload it through the form. So if you do have folks that you know everybody has a Gmail account, they know how to sign into it, this is great. If you're worried about respondents not having that or not knowing how to sign into it, then it might be better to choose a different option. And it gives you this nice big like warning, hey, be careful. And then in that question, you can choose to allow specific file types. The way it sorts file types is using Google Drive. They do have to use Google Drive to upload it. That's how it knows what it is. And then a maximum number of files and file size. Before we move on, does anybody have any questions about those question types? Your short answer paragraphs, your multiple choice check boxes and drop downs, your file uploads. Yeah. So do any of those questions branch like to other, you know, if I answer this, it may branch out to that. If That's I, what you'd use sections for. And, but, so I didn't get how it branches, or is that important? Let me, let me show you. Let me show you just an example. So if I had a multiple choice question, in fact, I'm gonna change your question. Perfect. So it's like, do you want chicken or beef? I might choose drop down because I don't want people writing in, like, no, I want tuna. <laughs> And I would set that to go to a section based on my answer. But before before we go on to that, I'm going to Did create. That little command based mm -hmm. on, okay. Yes. That's so this little three dots go to section based on answer. Okay. And then I'm going to mess around with our other sections real quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to title this the beef section. <clears throat> That's what's for dinner. That's what's for dinner. That's what's for dinner. <laughs> and then I'm going to clear out some of our imported questions so that we don't have quite oh, as yeah. much stuff. <laughs> And then I'm gonna ask like, how do you want your beef? There will be only un one option, it's medium rare. That's how you're getting your beef. <laughs> and then, but I want my respondents to be able to give an option for chicken. The chicken section will be, we actually add a question. What do you want on your chicken? You want cheese. <laughs> okay, so then we're gonna go back. After you've got your questions created, you know that these are the options you're gonna need. And this really is one of the more technical parts of forms is being able to keep track of where your questions are going. I'd choose my chicken or beef section and I'd choose within chicken, I want you to go to section three, chicken section, if you choose chicken. And if you choose beef, I want you to go to section two, the beef section. And where'd you go to do that? Because I totally missed it. Okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be rude for a second and mm -hmm. get rid of some of this extra stuff. Oh, I spent so much time. I know on you that. did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so to change, just to recap what that looks like, if I want folks to go to a specific section based on what they answer, I'm gonna choose the three dots icon down in the bottom right of that specific question. And I'm gonna choose go to section based on answer. And when that's selected, Different options will show up next to each question option. So hey, if I choose this chicken option, I want it to go to chicken section. If I choose beef, I want it to go to beef. 
And we're going to preview this, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what those other options were. So if I were to take this form, I'd choose whether or not I wanted chicken or beef. And if I choose chicken, I go straight to the question about what I want on chicken. And I can choose cheese, and I can submit my form. So there's something I missed, though, when I set this up, and I'll show you what, what I missed. So if I choose beef, and I go next, I'll go to the beef section, but when I choose medium rare, I've moved on to the chicken section. So what you just if, if you use sections, you have to be really careful that your what they do after the section is clear. So that's, there's, there's three different parts. You've got to set up all your questions, choose where your questions go to, and make sure your sections are set to take them to the right place after they answer that question. The reason we then went on to the chicken question is because after the beef section, our section two says to just go on to the next section, which is chicken. So instead we choose submit form. When they're done with the beef one, we're done, our form is over. No dessert? No dessert, not today. <laughs> this isn't that type of conference. Uh -huh. <laughs> So it, for any given thing, your options are you can choose a specific section you want to send them to. You can tell them, I just want it to go on to the very next section, or I want it to submit the form. I want this to be the last question they answer. I find it really helpful to map out, like in a flow chart, how I want this to go before I start working on it, or else I will send them somewhere else. And like we tell people all the time, especially when you're building courses, preview, 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 test to make sure it works. Okay. Yeah. Can you select multiple file types or just one type? You can select multiple file types. Let's go and check that. Let's go add a question. Go file upload. And then if you allow only specific file types, you can select multiple. I can say, yes, it can be a document or a spreadsheet. Okay. It can only be a document. It can be a document or drawing. There's no limit. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. OK. So I know sections are kind of tricky. When we get to the end, if you all want to come back to that and go over it again, we would be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you ready to go over our other yeah. question types? I'm going to stick with the food theme, too. I like food. <laughs> linear scale. All right. So the next type is linear scale. That's the, uh, you know, one to five you select based on how much you like something. And so, whoops. Sometimes called a Likert scale. Likert scale, Yeah. So the label for number one, you would select, um, let's see. Do you want chicken or beef? I don't want either of those. <laughs> How much do you like food? Label one. Not very much. I survive. Label five. I'm a foodie. That's why I'm in Bend. Y'all have some good restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> so then to preview that, it would just be Likert scale. You select the one that you want. We have not found a way to set anything in the middle. I know we've seen some that are like, this is not at all like me. This is totally like me. I'm indifferent. Mm -hmm. For Google Forms, you can only label the first and the last number on your screen. Yeah. So then we have a multiple choice grid. This is where you have columns and rows set up and the person can only select one item in each column or row. So let's go with menu options. So let's see. So I'm going to do dates here. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And my columns are going to be not kitchen parm, chicken parm. Chicken parm. What's another good item? Steak. I don't know. We'll stick with steak. We'll do shrimp parm. <laughs> what? Lots of parms. All the parms. All the time. Uh, so, when you look at that, it limits what you can select on the day of the week. So, you won't be able to select multiple items. Just pick one. So, that way, let's say steak this week chicken parm this week, shrimp parm this week. You can have steak multiple days of the week if you want to. So how many columns can you do? You have three and three. Right? I have three and three. Uh, as far as I know, I haven't tried to make a limit. I've done seven and seven before. I've yeah. Tons yeah. Pages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So you can, it's, 
I don't think there's a limit. Kind of just like the paragraph, not really a character yeah. limit on it. Google has no limits. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This question type is one of the ones that was the hardest for me to really grasp when I was mm -hmm. first playing with it. So this is really one like preview it, make sure it's actually doing what you want it to be doing. Yeah. You put the wrong column in the wrong place. Right. So the other option would be a multiple selection grid. Where is it? Checkbox grid. So this is one where you can have folks select multiple items in each column, as many as they want. So let's just keep going with the food theme. So we're going to say um, select all food options you would be willing to eat each day of the week. So let's just try to add a lot of columns. So I did that. I'm so glad you're fast typer. Yeah, it's letting me keep going too. Oh, it's it gave me a warning saying that I already had Sunday up there. So that's good. It does. Have a lot of <laughs> Does have a lot of smart, yeah. smart warnings. Google about. is way smarter than me. So. so while she's typing out stuff, the other thing you might see sometimes as you play with questions is it might automatically pop up and say data mm -hmm. validation. So if you are asking for, if it sees that you're trying to ask for an email address, <laughs> it might ask if you want to select a data validation option so that it has to be in the format of an email address for somebody to move on and submit it. It has to have that at symbol in it. Sometimes it'll give you, like, you can choose to have it select, like, okay, this needs to be a number between X and Y. This needs to be X number of characters long. It can help weed out some of those really silly answers. You haven't written noodles yet. Noodles. Let's just do plain buttered noodles. Okay. So lots of lists. All right, so let's go and preview that. Now it'll allow me to select multiple items in the row. So anything that I am willing to eat on Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, that sort of thing. There are better applications than food. I just can't think of one right now. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Meeting time is great, especially for multiple meeting times. I use Doodle Poll, but I might start using Google Forms instead just because the ease of use and more people know how to use Google Forms than Doodle Poll. Uh, we've had <laughs> some, some folks at our library have had some issues with Doodle Polls in the past, so <laughs> it's uh, Google Forms might be the way to go. <laughs> the other question type we have here is date. So you can actually do a specific date and a specific time if you want to. So let's try date. And we're going to say, what day were you born? And so when I click on this in preview mode, it gives me the option of selecting a calendar and the date on the calendar. So I can also select here. This might be more difficult for what date were you born, though, with the years. But it can be done. It can. You can do it. I'm going to give you false information. Yeah. The date questions are really good tool for avoiding somebody being like, oh, whatever day works for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have to pick. All right. And then the next one is time. Let me go ahead. So, click on the clock. So the one has to be previewed. Ah, thank you. That preview mode. All right. This is also great for like getting your employees day that they need to be out of the office. Uh, so we actually have a leave request form at our college in our department that will say, hey, what day are you taking off? Why are you taking it off? What times do you need off? So you can do from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. or whatever works. Um, so let's say. Not per question, no. Mm -hmm. For an individual question, it'll only let you select one day or one time. Yep. 
Okay. Okay. There are file upload options. Mm -hmm. Switch back over to our dear survey. <laughs> oh, that's presentation. <laughs> you do a lot of switching in bags. Like, why do you keep doing this? So this is the spot in our training where we normally tell folks, hey, yes, let's play around with it. We've done a lot more demoing this time since not everybody had like a full computer with them. So is there anybody that really, really wants like two or three minutes to just play around with them? Or are you guys ready to just keep booking full speed ahead? Full speed ahead. Let's book it. Okay. So this is a whole lot of text on a page. This is not for you to read right now. This is for when you guys have access to this that you guys actually you know what the, the actual information is, I'm actually just going to talk to you about it. So we're going to go out and look at it. So there's a lot of settings that you can look at on your forms. I'll close out of some of these extras. Let's see, I got my sheet sheet. So up here in your settings option, it's the regular standard gear you usually see for settings. There are quite a few different things you can use. So your, your collect email addresses is a very automatic option. It'll collect the email address of whoever's taking your form. That's also one where you have to be logged into a Google account to take it. So if you don't want folks to have to be logged into a Google account, it's better to just create a question that asks them about it. Response receipts means that they get an email about what their <laughs> responses were or confirms that they actually submitted it. We use that for our time off form so that the employee themselves actually has a record that they, they did submit it. So here, this restrict to users in Lower Columbia College and its trusted organizations. If you are a Google school, you can restrict to only folks in your domain. We've got an instructor that restricts so that when he hands that form out to students, he knows that they have to be logged into their student email address to use it. Limit to one response also requires folks to sign into Google, but it's super useful if you have, oh, you know, a student who would love to just submit it multiple times and skew the results of which thing you want to choose for your class. I don't know if you guys have anybody like that. My brother does that mm -hmm. constantly. Edit after submit is tricky. It's, it's not super user friendly to get into, especially if they don't get a response receipt. It's hard for them to go back and find where to edit it. But if you do want folks to be able to edit after they submit the form, that would be your option. And then respondents can see summary charts and text responses means that when they're done, when they've finished their survey, they can also see the results of the survey. So we'll come back to that in a little bit when we get towards our the end of our presentation to show you how you can share some of these. So I'm going to remove some of these options. Your presentation options are pretty self-explanatory. You can show a progress bar. We hear that feedback from students a lot. I wish I knew how far into this I was. So if you've got a longer survey, that'll show folks, hey, you've got this much farther to go. Shuffle question order. Be very careful about using that. If you've got questions that rely on their answers to a previous question, don't choose that. <laughs> Uh, show a link to submit another response is really good when you have a form that somebody needs to submit multiple times. That just means that when they get to the very end of the form, right below whatever congratulations message you set for them, they'll see a link to submit another response to just go back to the beginning and do it again. And then this is one of my favorite parts of Google Forms is our confirmation message. So, yay, you finished. I'll save that. We'll go in and preview. I'm going to show you how they, they cheat the email address. It will technically take that as an email address. That's not my email address. It's just in the form of an email address. And so none of these other questions are required. So I'm just going to go next and submit. And then at the end of your survey, when it's done, there's my message. Yay, you finished. Mm -hmm. So I find it really useful to have that confirmation message if there's anything that's going to happen after the form is done. So we sent out to math faculty fairly recently a form that was, hey, we're going to come visit your classes, select the day and time that's going to work best for you. And then at the end of the form, it tells them, we'll reach out to you soon to set up your final time and to confirm that we've got you down for that slot. Mm -hmm. So if you have any information they need after they're done with the form, that's where they go. So the other spot where you've got some options is under your responses tab. So, so far, we've only touched the questions tab. The responses tab is where you find all your answers. And right now, you can see my, my response I just submitted. But there's another set of settings here that don't really look like settings. I wish it was all up in the settings tab. There are two different spots. So this little accepting responses button is great. It's just a toggle switch that tells your form whether or not anybody can take it. So not accepting responses means that anyone that has that link can't actually take the form. So if you had something like you wanted students to set up an appointment with you and they needed to have it done by Friday, on Friday you can go in and shut that off so that anybody that didn't go in and do it in the timeline they were supposed to has to just contact you directly. They can't keep going back to the form. And you can also choose like, hey, I can set a message 
if you didn't fill out this form by this time, please contact me here. So it's not like they just get an empty error message. The other and probably my favorite setting on Google Forms lives in this little three dots tab. So again, it's the responses tab and this little three dots icon. Get email notifications for new responses. So whatever Gmail account you're logged into, having that checked means that when somebody fills out that form, you get an email telling you that somebody filled out that form. You don't have to come check it every hour to see if somebody answered. There's a couple of other options here that are all very, um, some are very Sheets related, so select response destination. If you don't want to use Sheets, don't worry about that one at all. That's just telling it what sheet to send your responses to. You can download or print your responses, or if you're reusing a form you've used before, you don't need to keep the data. You can choose to delete all responses and clear out all your information so there's no more responses. So there's a lot of settings you can play with. Trial and error is usually like, the easiest way to do it. Play around with it. Any questions about settings before we move on to our next stuff? Anything you want to know whether or not you can do or not do? So when you say select the response destination, is that the default to just to create a new spreadsheet? The default, yeah, it creates a new spreadsheet. That's where you see the, the response, right? right? Yeah. So you don't ever have to go into Sheets to see your responses. We'll, we'll show you the responses to the survey we had you take just at the beginning of this to show you what that looks like. If you are super savvy with Sheets and you love being able to play with your data, yes, you can totally transport all of them to a sheet. You'd use this little green guy to send them to your spreadsheet automatically. It just starts mm -hmm. it up for you, creates a new one, or select an existing. And you but can if, name it. Too. And you can name it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like, oh, spreadsheet one, and now I have to go find it. But if you don't ever want to touch sheets, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. It's nice having sheets, though, because it has it all, you know, spread out. If you had people give their names, Ooh, then you would see their names nice and their job. responses if you wanted to. Yeah. You can make forms anonymous, I believe, by not accepting names. So then it just has a timestamp and everything else. But. Sarah, do you want to talk about customizing your form? I think I do. Yes. So you can also customize your form. Really? Perfect. It's this little paint palette up here. I'm going to go a little quickly through this because we've only got 20 minutes left. You can choose an image. The only downside with the images, it is a very narrow banner at the top that would have your image. And so you would either need to format your image beforehand to fit that banner or just know that it's only going to take a small chunk of your image, basically. So if you have a picture of a face, it might grab the eyes out of the picture. So uh, just really selecting something and then making sure that it looks good. So they also have a lot of images for you to select just right here in Google. Uh, let's say, I really like, was there a, let's do travel, since there's no 80s theme. And some binoculars, select. And those images have automatic color themes with them as well. And you can actually add more colors if you want to. So let's say I'd rather do red. There we go. So even with the Google images, it's just that random close-up of the image right there. You also have font styles. I highly recommend keeping it accessible though, because um, I mean, you do have this fancy one. Yeah, the question is to have to show you what that looks like. Yeah. There we go. So I mean, it looks pretty, but it's gonna be really hard to read and go through the form. Unless you're having a tea party, and then I feel like this is the default that you should use for a tea party, so. All right. Let's select a photo. I wonder if there are any photos on here. No, we're it's not my computer. Territory. I know I am. Hey, we're gonna find out some secrets of whoever owns this computer. <laughs> But no, they don't have any photos. So that's really essentially the customization. Can you bold text or that? That's another really good caveat about Google Forms. Mm -hmm. It's very, very simple. There are not text editing options. So yeah. if, you, if you have a lot of instructions you need to give, Google Forms might not be your best option because you can't break up headers. It doesn't have any of those formatting options. Your best, mm -hmm. you can do section titles, you can do question titles. There are, it, it is accessible unless you're sticking a bajillion <clears throat> paragraphs of text in there. But 
Yeah, that that's my main like oh bummer. You can't bold, yeah. can't italicize, mm -hmm. can't do headings. That's yeah. kind of a bummer. That is a bummer. So we're going to talk about sharing your form now. This is not how you share your form. <laughs> Can be frustrating. So sharing options really. Oh, <laughs> FYI, this is not acceptable <laughs> text down here at the bottom. <laughs> We're not sure why it's happening. Uh, so really, the sharing options, the golden rule is to not use the URL. You're in your form. You see that URL up there at the top. You just want to copy and paste it. Don't do it because it's going to take them to the form itself. Say they don't have access. It's really, it's not going to work well for them. So you want to use that send button up at the top. So, uh, That's what it should look like. Yes. When I'm in here, let's close these theme options, that send button right there. So I click on send. I can actually just type in some email addresses, or what I usually use is the link option. So you grab that link, and then you can hyperlink it in an email or send it in a, you know, like a PowerPoint presentation. Link options are okay. Link options. You can even shorten that URL right there in Google Forms, which is nice. However, I do highly recommend Bitly. Uh, I love Bitly, it's great. You can actually get analytics through Bitly as well if you sign up for an account. So that's pretty awesome. A free account. A free account even. You can also embed this in your Canvas class as well. So if you go to these little carrots over here, they're not really carrots though, are they? They're brackets, brackets. Angle brackets. Angle. Uh, if you go to the brackets, then you get an iframe embed code, and you can take that to your Canvas course, go to the HTML em editor in Canvas, and pop this in there. So you can embed a, a form right in Canvas. If you don't use Canvas, we can't speak to what your LMS can do. <laughs> we can't. It probably has. In Moodle, yeah. too? Okay, perfect. It yeah. probably has an HTML. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you do the send form, <clears throat> Mm -hmm. um, oh, I see. Oh, for email or linking, it says gives you the option to automatically collect responded email address. Um, is that what, does yours do that too? Mm -mm. I have add collaborators, send email addresses. I do. Right here, collect email addresses. There it is. Yes. Yeah, okay. There's yeah. another spot where that same setting is. Mm -hmm. Is that. Is that where you, because like if I wanted a form and then I want to know who put that mm -hmm. submission in, then that's where you get that to happen? Yes. It doesn't happen like in settings when you're designing the form. Yeah, so there's a couple of different ways to do it. It has a lot, it's, it's like Google Forms really, really, really wants you to collect people's email addresses. Yeah. yeah. So they have it in multiple spots. They have it in multiple places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because otherwise it is really <clears throat> difficult. Unless you really, really, really know the people you had put in the form answers, it's hard to tell who submitted what. Yeah. In some cases, you don't want to know who submitted right. what, but mm -hmm. frequently you do. Okay. So episode three is response review. So we're going to take a look at that form you guys filled out when you came in. But there are two different ways for you to review responses. You can do it right in forms from that responses tabs. In tab, you can do either summary results or individual results. Or you can do it in sheets. You can look at all of those responses right in sheets and update it however you want and manipulate it however you want. My one warning for folks that use sheets, if you have your data connected to a sheet, it will constantly update with new responses, which is awesome. You don't have to go in and manually tell it, okay, update, update, update. What I do warn folks is just that if it does that and it's manually updating, I highly recommend copying that data into a new sheet before you mess with it. Otherwise, after you've messed with it and you've moved stuff around, as soon as it puts in new data, it's gonna look real weird. It's gonna mess everything up. It's gonna change where that stuff's at because the new stuff that comes in doesn't know what you've done to the sheet. If that was all mumbo jumbo. So we're gonna take a look at the, the questionnaire you just filled out. So anytime you're on a form, your responses tab will tell you how many responses it has. And we have eight. And I can see a summary of our responses. Or I can choose that create spreadsheet button to port them out to a spreadsheet. But here are our summary of responses, what folks have answered our questions. And you see them all in summary. Mm -hmm. Some of your charts will look up. They'll be all color coded for you. 
lots of different ones. And then let's see about our, so that last question, the survey schedule question, this is what our response looks like. It's broken down by day. We seem to really like 9 a.m. <clears throat> it's a good time. Yes. And the other way to view responses is by individual. So we did not collect email addresses for this one, but if you had collected email addresses, there would be a spot right here that would give you that email address with a drop down so you could select which email addresses form you wanted to see. If you had it asked for people's names, you would just have to look at the name on the form. Mm -hmm. But we can slip through each of the forms and look at individual results and in surveys. That's where they give you. They look like the questions as you would present them. Mm -hmm. So any questions about looking at responses themselves? I have one more cool thing about responses. Yes. Tell me more. Yes. So let's say you want to share your awesome pie chart with somebody. Yes. There is an option when you hover over it. I just got to get There's a copy button up here at the top of the question. So if you click on that copy button, you can now paste it onto a Word document, into an email, and send that pie chart to somebody. You can do that with any of the pie charts or bar graphs on here. You can't really do it with the questions, with the answers, but that's what you would go to the Excel spreadsheet for, not Excel, the Google sheet for. But yeah, that's a really nifty feature. And whether it's a pie chart or whether it's depending on the type of question that you Right. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Some types of questions are always look like pie charts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really your multiple choice questions will mm -hmm. look like pie charts. Anything where somebody has to choose one response, your mm -hmm. drop down questions will too. Yep. Can you do the response Yeah, absolutely. There we go. It has a timestamp, which is really helpful. Uh, so if somebody, if you forget to turn off that do not submit option after a certain time, then you can at least look at the timestamps and weed out the timestamps that you don't want to use. So that's kind of nice. Uh, it has all of the questions up here at the top. And then you can even click on this option here to like organize by alphabet or uh, alphabetically organized. Sorry, my day quill is wearing off. I can feel it. <laughs> um, uh, and then uh, it just has all of the options here over on the right. So. Is that the only place that you can see people's names? Because like if you were looking at the pie chart, you wouldn't see. Right, you wouldn't see their names. Nope. See their names. nope. Yeah. You really do. Yep. Yeah. And especially if you have a question where it asks for their name, that's how you would see it is in sheets. You could see it in that review. Um, so it was if the quest, first question was, what's your name? Then you would see that in that individual review, the name, and then all of the questions below that. Yeah. Oh, so you can sort it by what did the person respond to on each question? What the person Um kind of. So let's go back to that individual option. So let's say um, my first question was actually, what's your name? Then it would just be up here at the top, what's your name? And you can go from question or from answer to answer. So I'm on number four. If I go to number eight, it would show the name. Let's actually. So would that be the only way to see them? how exactly the I'm going to show off the form I have that does take names. Yeah, let's do that. Do that. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about add-ons when I pull yeah. that up. Yeah. So the other uh, cool thing with Google Forms are add-ons. You can actually add on items that do neat things. So for example, form limiter, once you receive 25 responses, it turns off the form or prevents anybody from submitting after a certain amount of responses. There's also like email notifications. You can get email notifications to multiple people and forms publisher. Oh. So on each new form submission, it generates a PDF and then Google Docs slides and it automatically imports data, merging it with the document. And Danielle tried that one out, which was pretty cool. So, and we can show you how to add add-ons. It's just a little option. Just let my share drive No, That's where that's at. It's in my diversity and equity committee folder. Ha ha. So I have a form where I was collecting responses from folks to sign up for a racial equity challenge. And if I look in my response tab, I collected email addresses. So I can see all of the email addresses of folks that responded. And then under individual summary, if I've got names, and this is the only one I'm going to show you because it's a like staff account. I don't want to give you a bunch of student <clears throat> information. But this one, 
like I can see the address, I can see the name, and I can choose from the top like my list of addresses. Mm -hmm. Since you're already there, do you want to show them where to add the add-ons? Yeah. yeah. Here, my Lord. Let's go. Yes, mm -hmm. so if you want to add add-ons, add-ons are super useful. There's lots of stuff they can do that Google Forms just can't do on its own. That three dots icon up in the top right, it's a lot of neat stuff here. It's the add-ons button that you want. And think of it kind of like the App Store. Some of them mm -hmm. are free, some of them are not. Some of them have features that you can use until you pay for them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Really look at the reviews that they have on these yeah. add-ons. Because there are some add-ons that you cannot turn off once you add them to your form. So, yeah. Be yeah, careful. Really look at the reviews. People have warned you what might not be good. <laughs> so, yes. it's helpful. So, like, the form publisher, I mm -hmm. believe, is the one we use for our leave requests. Yes. So, our leave requests, don't, you don't just fill out the form. It will send, if I submit a leave request through our Google form, it will send <clears> Sarah <throat> an email asking her to approve it. Mm -hmm. So, it isn't just... Um, limited to, oh, I fill it out and then it just goes off into the ether. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but that is how that works. Okay. Does that answer your question a little bit more about how to, to tell the difference between which responses are which? Okay. Good. All right. So we talked about our responses. <coughs> we talked about add-ons a little bit. When you get access to this set of slides, there is a link that will take you to a list just of really good potential mm -hmm. add-ons to use. Yep. And that is what we have for you. Do so you have more questions or anything about how to use forms? Yeah. Oh, wait, so the required sign-in, the um, one where you limit it to the email, mm -hmm. I it. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be in our settings. So in the settings up in the top right, that little gear icon, it'll be restrict to users in. For those of you who aren't Google schools that don't have domains set up, that option won't be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're not logged into your Lower Columbia account, that won't be there. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's why it's not there. Okay, any other questions? Also really helpful, most things in Google have that little question mark. If you want more information about something, you can click on that question mark, and it'll tell you how to use it or what it's for, which is kind of handy. Yes. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, does anybody want to talk a little bit more about how those sections worked? I know that was a little bit of that's a confusing spot. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Forms, what we've used forms for hasn't been complex enough that we've really needed mm -hmm. to use very many add-ons. I know that Forms Publisher is the one we use for our like approvals. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard that Forms Limiter works really well, but that is a specific use case kind of deal. So like if you were doing a giveaway and you wanted the first 25 people who respond to get a free t-shirt, you can set it so using Forms Limiter, after 25, it stops taking responses so that people don't think, oh, I'm going to get a free t-shirt because I filled out the form. Mm -hmm. right, so there are really specific cases where yeah. you can find stuff to do. So that's what we found with forms anyway, is that if, you, if you're using an add-on, it's usually because you went in search of it because forms wouldn't let you do something. Yeah. And all of the Google apps have add-ons. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Ooh. So, you can find them in Google Drive, so wherever you put them at, mm -hmm. they'll show up in Drive. Can I scroll down your Drive? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yes. It, I don't know, maybe it's just the tablet, but it was like, I kind of was playing, I made one, mm -hmm. and then now I can't find it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Drive. Okay. So, if you go into Drive, they're the little purple guys, but if you don't want to use Drive, there is, you can specifically go to Forms, so that mm -hmm. same little three Rubik's Cube icon. You might have to choose more, but it can take you directly to forms. And it looks kind of like Google Docs does, but it shows you just your forms. It doesn't show you any of the other stuff that would be in Drive. And that also gives you the option to set up different templates. You can use Google Forms to do quizzes. We tend to not advertise them because most folks really prefer that you stick with your LMS. But if you need another option for quizzes, this would totally do it for you, which is just a, it's just a setting in your settings tab for quizzes. Yeah, using, yeah. So if you go to Drive, mm -hmm. you would see the thing that you created. Oh, I see it. I found it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah, using Google Forms directly will also, it's a lot easier to find forms that mm -hmm. way because they all show up in that one spot. Right. It was kind of weird. I mean, maybe it's user error here, but I was like looking in Play Store for 
forms for the app. Mm -hmm. Forms doesn't have an app. That's, it's one of the few Google mm -hmm. apps that doesn't. And I think yeah. it might have something to do with just the history of Forms. So Forms was originally an add-on for Google Docs. It wasn't. It hasn't always existed on its own, but it was a popular enough add-on that Google built it out into a full full feature. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have a mobile app version yet. Yeah, it's interesting though. If you have the Google Drive app, you can see the forms that you've created yeah. and look at them, but you just can't edit them in the Google Drive app. Yeah. Up, you can pull them up and, and look out, at them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Fill them out. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So yeah, any students you have that you send this to, they will be able to do it on a mobile device. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions or no? Close on time. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Feel free to take some candy with you. <laughs> <laughs> we technically have four minutes left, so if you want to like mess around, we can. Walk or I around feel and like we just questions. gave you four minutes of your life back. That's <laughs> Really confusing. Yeah. It's an app, but there's no app. Right? I was looking for it. I'm like, yeah. It's a yeah. It's a web app, not a mobile app. Web app it's yeah. like, man, technology needs to stop reusing words. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So we just I went to a session about um, AI, and they were talking about Alexa and how Alexa has skills. And I was like, these are just basically apps for Alexa. So I mean, oh. just all the different terminology. Technology words. Yeah. <laughs> Skills. Oh, skills. So Alexa has skills, yes. not apps. Yeah. <laughs> They're apps. Yeah. They are. And then there is. Yeah. So I went to the Google session and I asked to get added to that Google education so we could integrate it and then there was a kind of CSM. We have errors, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mm -hmm. One kid was like, put the quarters in there. Uh, no, you put a buck in there. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, hey. I came to steal candy. Oh, what? No, you didn't come to our session. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Lindsay said. You didn't come to session.